There's electricity in the air. It's a common expression and one that's true. Take a comb, run it through your hair on a dry day, and you can get a static shock. Sure, it's electricity, all right, but could it also be tapped to produce sufficient energy we could all use? Benjamin Franklin is credited as being the inventor of the electrostatic motor back in the 1700s, but its power output was modest. The Wimhurst electrostatic generator is a high-voltage mechanism developed in the 1800s which can be hand or self-started and will produce dramatic sparking while charging Leyden jars. Today it's used in teaching about electricity, but its practical applications are considered inconsequential. A high-tech variation of the Wimshurst device is the Testatica, or Swiss ML converter. Developed by Paul Baumann of the Maternative Community in Switzerland during the 70s, this free energy device is a marvel that has been in operation for more than 20 years, supplying electricity to the small, self-sufficient Christian community. Many technical experts have come away stumped by its excess output. However, because the community feels that the majority of mankind is not ready to be responsible for such unlimited energy, they're keeping the technology under wraps until such time the world is spiritually prepared. But other researchers, like Dr. Oleg Jefaminko, continue to pursue real-world applications for harnessing the electrostatic motor. His accomplishment, I feel, is the best, is that he used a specific type of electret which is a waxy substance which holds charge and um, it's like a, uh, in many ways a magnet, electrical analog of a magnet. And he's achieved a 0.1 horsepower motor, which is a small device. So, and this runs continually on atmospheric electricity. Like the homopolar generator, the electrostatic motor is based on the dynamics of our Earth environment. As with wind and solar power, they offer real sustainable alternatives that with only modest gains in efficiency, could contribute to the replacement of our current dependence on fossil fuels. Are we clever enough to learn from the clues our planet is providing?